Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial explaining how to stack pictures in Deep Sky Stacker. The first thing you want to do when you enter Deep Sky Stacker is open your picture files. I usually put the picture files in the same folder to make sure that I have all the picture files in one place. As you can see, Deep Sky Stacker has imported all of the frames, and um, if you click on the frames individually, you can see a preview of the frame itself. This preview is not how it will look like in the end, though, and it looks sometimes more red, and it doesn't look like it, it's not the proper color balance. You can adjust this by scrolling the bar here just to see how the image looks like. This does not affect your final image. Now I have made the color balance so that the stars are roughly standing out against the background. Then you want to import your dark file. To create dark frames you must keep the same exposure and ISO speed and put the lens cap on your scope. Then, with the cap on the scope, take the pictures. They will look black on the back of your screen, but they contain noise. This noise will be extracted from your final images. To create bias frames, you must do the same process as a dark frame. However, here you must put your exposure setting to the absolute lowest possible. To take flat frames, you must first put your telescope outside in the daytime. You must put a white t-shirt over your telescope and make sure it is tight. Then put the camera to an auto exposure time mode. Shoot the photos and then make sure that you shoot at least something like 15 of them. On the back of your screen you will see images that are white. Most times you will see that it has dark edges. This is the vignetting and this will reduce that vignetting in your images. Now you need to press on check all to check all of the pictures. Scroll through of some of the pictures to check if they are ok, and check if there are no shooting stars, satellites or planes in your image. Once this is done, you can go to Registered Check Pictures, and click on Advanced. Here you will detect the number of stars in the picture. It does this automatically by clicking compute the number of detected stars. As you can see it is computing a lot of stars in this image. You do not want high stars otherwise it will crash your computer or it will be very very slow. Therefore you need about 500 stars maximum. I recommend doing about 300 stars. 345 stars is okay. Now you want to before you do this you want to go to Stacking parameters. Here you can see lots of different options that look very complicated, but the baseline is you need to go to recommended settings. These settings show red when something is wrong and green when you're doing something right. I use bilinear debayering because it's green. I do not have H alpha, so if I click on this, then that will be red. And seeing as I do have low exposure time, this is the better option because it suits my imaging. These two you can combine, you can try both 
I usually use auto adaptive weighted average combination method. And these two, I find that the upper option is the best. Now, if you have missed any satellites, or if there are stars that are not round, you can always do 90% of the pictures, as this might improve your image and get rid of those bad frames. Now you need to press OK and it will stack and register your pictures. Sometimes your ISO or your exposure does not match. This is not a great problem as the ISO speed and the exposure is both data and it will be added on top of each other. Sometimes your image will look like this after stacking. Do not worry, this is okay and can be fixed. If you look down at the bottom, you see that the data rows of blue, green and red are not in the same spot and are not at the front of the curve. You need to move them to the front by adjusting with these buttons. First we will move the red to roughly about here, at the bottom of the curve. Then we will move the green to the same position as the red. Finally, we will move the blues. Sometimes you need to move it back a little bit. Now, once you have aligned all of the channels, you need to press apply. As you can see, it already revealed that the image is much, much better than before. You can clearly start to see the nebulosity in this, and you see that the white balance is okay. However, the saturation is not good. To do this, you need to go to saturation, and if your images look somewhat like this, you need to put the saturation at roughly 20%. Now you can see that the reds are more prominent in the image. You can see here that the reds are too prominent. The curve does not look like it looked before, this is because I needed to reload the image. However, this red adjustment does not need the image like it was before. We need to look at these stars here. We have this star over here and this star needs to look blue. That's already way better. You can see now that these stars are beginning to look gold and this star is looking blue. Your image is now properly stacked. If you want more details in your image, you simply need to shoot more images. You need to get more data on the object to reveal these details. In the past, I tried to reveal these details by stretching my images. This is not a good tactic. You need to get more data on it because then you have more detail. It's as simple as that. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more tutorials.